so uh, welcome to this session i am professor mr shahriya parvez founder and ceo independent perception research of bangladesh and in this session uh, we have total uh, five paper and our i am inviting now the first papers from my serial number 1 that uh, Maputo protocol uh, protecting african women's right and uh, this paper is actually present by dr uh, karavi barman uh, aston professor pg department of law gujarati university and dr kasturi bora please go ahead good evening sir good evening everyone uh, the paper the am i audible yes you are please yes so maputo uh, the paper that we are presenting is maputo protocol protecting african human rights of women now particularly what the very objective of this paper is to bring forth the very idea that women's rights are also human rights human right is something which we are discussing since time immemorial if we talk about the un uh, uh, the united nation charter in 1945 it talked about protection of human rights again coming to the international treaty that is the universal declaration of human rights though it is not a bind legally binding one in 1948 it talked about protection of human rights in such a manner so that human beings the minimum human rights can be reached and it is the duty of the state to see that the state parties are obliged to see that the minimum human rights reaches the needy and everyone now uh, if you again if you talk about the constitution of india also it mandates various provisions where women are given special privilege but what is seen what is seen from the research is that that women are not given special privilege anywhere and it is only in the legislative framework whereas when it comes to practice it is not implemented here i would uh, like to talk about the african maputo protocol because african uh, in fact the developed nation of the um, united uh, of the usa it is built with the sweat and blood of the uh, african people of the african continent now when we talk about the maputo protocol this is the protocol which is having this is just an just like an international bill of rights because it not only recognizes every every right of women but it also recognizes the reproductive right of the women whether they would go for that or not that is the most peculiar thing about this right whether they would want to go about it or not for example it gives the right of the women to decide that when they are having two children how much gap they would like to keep between the two children and whether they would like to when the that means that this protocol makes it very clear that women are no longer treated as child bearing machinery because it gives the full right to the woman to decide whether they want to go have a reproductive care, whether they go, want to go for the exp sir it's not audible sir hello dr karavi um, uh, are you with us for example number 1 holding kenya accountable for failing to investigate and prosecute sexual and gender based violence following the 2007 elections again letting girls learn in sierra leone now in december 2019 the court of justice gave a landmark judgment it declared that the ban which prohibited pregnant school girls from going to school in sierra leone was discriminatory and in violation of girls right to education the government was found to be in breach of articles 2 and 12 of the maputo protocol which calls on the state parties to eliminate discrimination against women and girls to guarantee equal opportunities and access to education following the court's ruling the government of sierra leone lifted the ban in march 2020 resulting in girls being granted access to education the court's decision set a precedent for the west african countries another thing another uh, thing which i want to bring into limelight is the ensuring minimum age of marriage that is 18 years in tanzania for both boys and girls 
following a ruling by the high court in 2016 that tanzania court of africa upheld a landmark ruling against child marriage in 2019 the case challenged the constitutionality of section 13 and 17 of the marriage act which set the minimum age of marriage for girls at 15 years and 18 years for boys the high court had ruled that a marriage under the age of 18 years was illegal and directed the government of tanzania to raise the minimum age of marriage to 18 years for boys and girls within one year the court made a reference to article 6 of the maputo protocol which sets the minimum age of marriage at 18 years next protecting women and girls right in mali in 2011 the government of mali passed the family code which had provisions that were inconsistent with the provisions of human rights instruments which include that the maputo protocol the family code had set the minimum age of marriage at 16 for girls and 18 for boys the provision also did not require religious ministers to obtain proof of marriage consent it also gave precedence to the religious and customary laws when handling inheritance issues the african court found that the government of mali had used the thing which had been violation under article 6a and b and 21 of the maputo protocol on the minimum age of marriage consent to marriage and rights of inheritance now what uh, i would like to bring to the paper is what we have seen is that though human rights we it see human rights means it's to, it's talking about equality but what we see women are still treated to be among the marginalized class where we are bringing among the marginalized class the uh, discriminatory faces women are still among them so thereby what uh, we would like to suggest to this paper is that an attempt should be made to create an awareness so that women rights are also treated as human rights and so that they are upgraded and a sense of belongingness should come from within so i want to stop there that's that's it sir thank you thank you so much so uh, the uh, there is a floor is open there is any kind of question from the other participant on this uh, paper if you have any question you can ask if if there is no question then um, i have uh, one uh, question and one uh, clarity from dr karavi that uh, is, uh, your uh, is this paper actually it is the descriptive paper so yeah this, uh, this paper is a doctrinal paper sir okay fine and uh, uh, from uh, uh, where you actually collect all the data what, what are the sources of data you collected from this paper in paper yeah i have collected from various books which i have already uh, given in my presentations while forwarding the paper and i have mm -hmm. also collected from the various uh, uh, especially from the internet okay uh so all the uh, have you any uh, kind of literature review in in your paper or research gap uh actually literature review in the sense that yes because uh, what we see that most of the books they have uh, i have already they have uh, projected the problems but the real solution when it comes to solution except for the awareness much thing is not focused that is what we have found sir okay so what's your uh, main conclusion or your uh, the, the suggestion for the future researcher uh, sir i feel that what is lacking is the effective monitoring system that is the implementation part is lacking because the three organs of the government if you say legislature uh, judiciary and the executive they are working but what lacks is the implementation part so the uh, for the future researcher i want to just bring to highlight that they can go through as to how to look into the implementation part as we are seeing a sense of awareness should come a sense of uh, belongingness should come from within so this is the suggestion given but how to bring how to arouse this consciousness so that everyone thinks that yes women rights are human rights also okay so thank you so much for your kind presentation you have a nice presentation in this session uh thank you sir thank you 
so now we move to our next uh, speaker our our next paper is actually related on the cultural identity and the role of english language analyzing sri mahadev bhai desai process so i am uh, inviting uh, patel prakash uh, research scholar uh, gujarat university please sir the floor is yours Are you with us? I am again asking that our next paper is cultural identity and the role of English language analyzing Sri Mahadev Bhai Desai prose. Patel Prakash, research scholar, Gujarat University. Are you with us? Okay. So uh, we go forward for our third paper. That is uh, Rubina Akhtar. Rubina Akhtar, are you with us? Yes, sir. Good evening, okay. sir. Good evening. So our third paper is actually on the four culture of Gu uh, Gujarat, tribe of Jammu and Kashmir. So Rubina Akhtar, PhD scholar, Department of Sociology, lovely professional university, Punjab. Please, the floor is okay. yours. Good evening, sir. Good, uh, good evening to all of you. My topic is folk culture of Gujarat tribe of JNK. India is regarding as a country where the majority of the world's tribes and community reside. Currently, there are tribal population in 30 Indian state in UT, which are broken down into 705 distinct ethnic groups with 11.9% and 14.7% of the population of scheduled tribes. Jammu and Kashmir is second after MP Madhya Pradesh. 12 different tribes make up Jammu and Kashmir population of 14.9 lakh scheduled tribes. In terms of population, Gujar ranked third in Jammu and Kashmir behind Kashmiri and Ladakhi. The Gujar community was originally established in Gurdistan, but later they began to migrate eastward through Afghanistan and Suleiman into the Indus Valley where they eventually arrived. Then they began to migrate southward once more arriving in Gujarat after that it spread in different places of India. It is a distinctive linguistic identity characterized the Gujar community culture. They wear clothing that is reminiscent of Pakistan Pashtu ethnic group. Gujars can very effectively be represented culturally through dancing, religious ceremonies, and traditions. Jammu and Kashmir is home to a majority of Muslim Gujar. Old customs and traditions are rigorously observed by these tribes. The practice of having both boys and girls get married uh, young is still practiced by them. The Gujar observes a variety of holidays that set them apart from other groups, including Bisakhi and the lighting of lamps at graves and shrines that are closely related to North Indian Hinduism. Their religious practices and traditions are integrated. Gujar community members use distinctive clothing and accessories. Gojri is the name of the native tongue of Gujar. In this study, secondary source of data are used. This research intends to highlight the language, dress, food, folk, dance, and songs, marriage ceremony, festivals, religious beliefs of Gujarat tribes of Jammu and Kashmir. The world's tribal communities originate in India. It contains 705 distinct ethnic groups that are spread throughout more than 30 states are union territories. Since the beginning of time, tribal communities have tended to be a segregated and isolated part of society. Their way of life, culture, and traditions are completely distinct from those of other social groups. One of them, Kujar community, community primarily resides in Jammu and Kashmir, Punjab, Haryana, Western UP, and Rajasthan in Northwest India. After the Kashmiri and Ladakhic community, 
communities it is the third largest community in jammu and kashmir in addition to being multicultural multilingual jammu and kashmir is home to a large number of diverse ethnic group one of them is the gujar community which is a crucial part of the overall culture of jammu and kashmir gujars have lived in jammu and kashmir for a very long time numerous tribes and ethnic groups have migrated them from all over the world The Gujar community began to migrate from their native lands towards the Shivalik and sub Himalayas when a severe droughts and plague disease spread in Gujarat in 5th and 6th centuries. Then a period of dryness occurred in Rajasthan in the 6th and 7th centuries. They settled permanent after that they settled permanently in Jammu and Kashmir because this area was suitable for their cattle grazing. Grazing as far as culture for culture of gujar community is concerned it is a distinct cultural and linguistic identity distinguish the gujar community with the jewish characteristics they have tolerant personality the pashto peoples of pakistan can be distinct by their clothing as they adapted to their particular surrounding they created their own culture but with the entrance of industrialization urbanization and other influences in recent years The tribal indigenous culture has undergone changes. Gujar culture is very well represented through dancing, religious rites, and other practices. The importance of religion has been recognized by the tribes. Jammu and Kashmir is home to a majority of Muslim Gujars. These are the tribes that adhere rigidly to ancestral practices. The practice of getting married, married young, their wives married at the age of 18, and girls at the age of 14. it is still prevalent in their culture as for as dressing sense salwar kameez is worn by gujar men and women while their women typically wear ladies salwar kameez shawls and caps their male typically don salwar kameez waistcoat and pagdi sutan is a term for the salwar worn by both men and women and kurti is a term for the kameez The Gujar community dresses very differently from the other group. To be warm during the icy month, males also don a coat and shawl called a kamal. Many community members no longer dress in traditional attire. The community culture is seriously threatened by the unbalanced condition and shift towards sedentism. Gujar people still dress in their distinctive, lengthy and traditional garb. Gujars typically dress according to their customs and jewelry. Women typically wear a round cap with a trail of coarse overstitch, a black salwar, a dupatta with many color, and a shirt embellished with a variety of buttons and embroidery. Women of all ages are seen wearing heavy jewelry, kangan, saras, malong, and balis are frequently seen. In Jammu and Kashmir, the Gujar population. live a very different lifestyle from the other communities and they also have different needs and issues the community has a unique manner of speaking that lags behind other community in terms of education economy politics and social development the gujri language they speak which originated in rajasthan and was influenced by punjab urdu punjabi urdu hindi and pahadi is spoken by them For Gujar holiday or significant occasion, they have a strong religious belief and rejoice in their life. In their festivals, with festivals are observed with original music, delectable cuisine, and a rich tradition. It is a crucial component of the Gujar community is its custom and rituals. The traditions of marriage ceremonies vary between communities. Marriage plays a significant role in the social landscape. The Gujar community conduct a weddings. According to modest custom, curd is sent to the household celebrating the wedding by relatives and neighbors as a token of their goodwill. The wedding family prepares its meals with a lot of curd or dahi and salt. The bride is adorned with silver jewelry, including necklace, earrings, bracelets, rings, and chain. The bridegroom adds to his grace and splendor by donning headgear such as lungi, waistcoat, shirt, and salwar. in addition to a handkerchief in his hand in the word sahara on his forehead 
According to their way, the Guja community enjoy playing four games. They engage in a variety of activities, including tan gif, stone lifting, and arm holding. The primary food sources for this community are millet, grains, wheat, and maize. They are both vegetarian and non-vegetarian. The Guja community enjoy foods like makki ki roti, ganhar, sarson ka saag, lassi, kaladi. is the herding of lifestyle including buffalo goats and sheep by the gujar community they moved with their livestock to the gujar uh, to the upper himalaya during the summer and return to the plains during the winter there is a shortage of competent laborers in several trades and crafts they rely mostly on the rearing of cattle in the products they produce from beginning to end this community has conserved and maintains its identity Gujars of Jammu and Kashmir are nomads, spread almost all regions of state. As nomads tribe, they are involved in pastoralism and transhumanism with their lifestyle. Socially, uh, Gujar it is a socially, culturally, economically, and politically very poor community. They spend a pathetic life due to number of problems in their life. There is a need to take immediate step by government and other development agencies to protect the folk culture and development of this tribe. Thank you, sir. The floor is open. Uh, any kind of question from the other participant on this paper? Okay, so I have a question that uh, Rubina Akhtar, you are presenting the paper. Actually, this paper is uh, belongs to the anthropological paper. So far, I concern uh, it's the ethnic community of Gujar community. So, uh, from where do you collect your data? the second source of um, data collected from books okay. uh, mostly from internet so your data source is secondary source of data yes yes the second source of data okay so um, uh, another point is here uh, in this paper have you any um, uh, research question that on that uh, question uh, of focusing on question you are moved to your paper any kind of research question you have no sir no sir hello hello han ji sir yes so uh, have you any kind of research question in your uh, paper no sir no sir. okay so i have just last question to you that uh, what's the main uh, conclusion and your uh, lack of study that yes the, the, this is my lack of study and the future researcher will research on uh, this point i feel in this paper the culture of gujar community tribes it is very old and uh, i think it maintain forever okay thank you so much for uh, presenting your paper thank you so <clears throat> dear participant now we go for our next paper uh, with the paper is on the study of sequence and ritual of uh, basantaras of manipur this paper presented by sriram rajeshwaran singh PhD scholar English department the Assam Royal Global University uh, are you with us uh, yes sir sir am okay. i audible yes you are audible please go ahead our respected chairman uh, uh, parvesa and my fellow scholars uh, I, i would be presenting a top uh, paper on the title the study of the sequence of uh, ritual of the santara of manipur so i would like to share my slide now yes please uh sir is it visible yes it is visible okay 
not the title is the study of okay, sequence. Okay, okay. Just um, uh, open the slides at first, please. Okay. Sir, it has opened at my place, so. Okay, it's, it's just uh, here we see the, uh, your monitor, your screen, but no slides yet visible yet. Okay, so let me try yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Is it visible now? We are waiting. Hello. Yes, we are waiting. Your screen is visible. Uh huh. Slide show. Okay. So, is it visible now? Uh, Hello, your sir? screen is visible, but there is no slide show yet. Uh, sir, but the slide is showing on my screen, sir. Mm, but uh, here we only observe your screen that PPT conference. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's uh, not a big deal. You just uh, presenting your paper from mm -hmm. your slides. We're mm -hmm. just hearing. Yes, please go okay, ahead. Sir. Okay. Sir. Uh, the, the title of my paper is The Study and Sequence of uh, Sequence and Ritual of Basantaras. Introduction. In in Vaishnavi tradition of India, the Ras Lila is considered to be the most beautiful depiction of soulful love of Radha and Krishna. Ras Lila is also known as a dance of divine love. And coming to the Vaishnavi tradition of Manipur, which is situated in the northeastern part of India, uh, the Ras Lila has become the face of Vaishnavi dance tradition. This dance tradition is one of the classical dances of India. It was created by a devout Maharaja Bhagyachandra in the 18th century. During his time, he created three Ras Leelas, namely Maharas, Basantara, and Kunjaras. The characters in this Manipuri Ras Leela are Krishna, Radha, and Sakhis. Uh, the Ras Leela of Manipur is inspired mostly from chapter 29, 30, 31, 32, and 33 of uh, the Hindu text Srimad Bhagavat. Uh, Basantaras was constructed with ideas from Brahma by Bharta Puparan, which is a book, and also a book called Git Govinda of Jayadeva. The objective of my study is to study the sequence of this performance, that is Basantaras. And next objective is to study the rituals connected with this performance. Next, to study the sequence of the Ras Pavilion. The Ras Pavilion is also known as Ras Mandali. And, and, and my last objective is to study the significance of this devotional performance. Methodology includes a collection of literatures from various cultural centers across the state and personal interview method with experts Documentation of this performance at Sri Sri Govindaji Temple, which is also the birthplace of this uh, performance. And lastly, the close reading of liter uh, related literature. Now we move on to the main part of this paper. Uh, uh, since it is going to be a grand per performance, a proper rehearsal is done before the main performance. So. The Panji Sanglakpa will fix a favorable day to commence the rehearsal of Basantaras. Panji Sanglakpa is the head Brahmin or priest of this temple. And next, women who are going to take the role of gopis will gather at the Ras Mandali. Ras Mandali is uh, the Ras Pavilion where the performance will take place. 
uh, this these women will gather at this Ras Mandali to attend a ritual called Pancadevata. This ritual Pancadevata is done so as to seek blessings from the Lord. And after this, uh, a ritual, after this ritual, a, the gopis, that is the women who are going to take part, will seek blessings from the teacher of this performance. Next, the rehearsal will commence after this ritual. And on the last day of uh, rehearsal, the rehearsal will take uh, will go on for three to four weeks. And on the last day of rehearsal, uh, a ritual called Lai Baton Katpa will be per performed by the teacher. Uh, this ritual, this is the ritual of giving invitations to the idol of the Lord and also to the participants. And after this ritual, everyone who was a part of the rehearsal will have a, a, a secret meal together and after this they will be advised to take a vegetarian meal until the performance takes place the, the the main part of the paper that is the basantara's performance on the day uh, on the day of main performance and in order to start this ritualistic performance first the brahmins that is the priest will uh, will bring the idols of Krishna and Radha from the temple to the Ras Mandali accompanied by percussion instrument, cymbal, and cones. And then uh, the idols will be kept at the center of the Ras Mandali. Ras Mandali means the pavilion. White curtains will be dropped on all sides of the pavilion to adorn a new costume to the idol of Lord Krishna. A male costume known as Natabharabesh will be adorned on the idol of the Lord Krishna. And these idols will be assumed as Radha and Krishna during the performance. And to start the performance, uh, Raga Achauba, which is also known as Nupapala or Sakitana, uh, will be performed. This Sakitana will serve as a prelude to this main performance. And this is performed only by men. And next, it will conclude with RT ritual. RT ritual is a ritual which is performed by the Brahmin before the idol. Uh, here, uh, the Brahmin will offer uh, sacred water, uh, sacred fire, and uh, sacred water. And this water will be sprinkled to each and every one present there. Next, the Arangpam, there is a uh, the Arangpam, there is the usher, will offer sandalwood paste and betel nut and also a traditional cloth to the teacher of this dance. Next, to mark the beginning of this ritualistic performance, the teacher will start playing the Raga Macha Punglon. Raga Macha Punglon is a drum beat uh, which is accompanied by a uh, conch. Next, the singers will sing. Guru Bandana. Guru Bandana is a song uh, 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 that des des describes the the intellect the intellect of various teachers. Vrindavan Vernon is a song that describes the beauty of the Nikunja forest of Vrindavan, and it will be followed by Banshi Anurag. Banshi Anurag is a uh, it will be played by the flutist who plays the flute. Here, various uh, melodious flute tunes will be played to connote the flute call of Lord Krishna. And it will be followed by the dance of Gopi Av Avishar. Gopi Avishar is a dance that depicts the journey of uh, gopis uh, to the Nikunja forest of Vrindavan to meet Lord Krishna. And next, uh, the, the, leader, the lead dancer of this performance, which is known as Lalita, will recite a sloka. As, a sloka is a Sanskrit verse and it is also a couplet of Sanskrit verse which each line contains 16 syllables. And next it will be followed by a pratana to the idol by the four, uh, by, uh, four women who are a part of this performance. Next, the lead dancer, that is Lalita, will perform Punglon Jagwe. Ulon Jagoi is a dance which is a dance only on drum beats. 
and it will be followed by various dances called Gopi Raga, Jagoi Mapo, Bangi Paring Achauba, Krishna Nartan, Radha Nartan. The duration from Gopi Raga to Radha Nartan is indeed very long. So, uh, and during this, various uh, reciprocation of songs uh, take place between the singers and also the uh, dancers. And it will be followed by a bear kill. Uh, this is the most significant part of this ritualistic performance uh, because spring being the season of uh, vibrant colors, uh, the play of colors is enacted in this episode. That is the Abirkhel part. And it will be followed by a dance of Krishna and Chandrabali, uh, which is known as Hariviha. A new character called Chandrabali is introduced in this Rakhlila. It will be followed by Man of Radha. Man means resentment of Radha. Uh, Radha gets up, upset after seeing Lord Krishna dancing with Chandrabali. Next, it will be followed by Kurumba Parin. Kurumba Parin means a chain of prayers, which is offered to the idol. And it will be concluded by Puspanjali. Puspanjali is the throwing of colors to the, the throwing of flowers to uh, the idols. And all this performance will be concluded with an RT ritual again. Here, the Brahman will off offer sacred fire and a sacred water called uh, Sankhazal will be taken out from conch. And this, uh, and, and this uh, sacred water will be uh, sprinkled to each and every one present there. And these idols will be taken back to the temple again. And after this, uh, the last uh, ritual called Sayan Arti will be performed inside the temple by the Brahmins. And uh, regarding the structure of this uh, pavilion, uh, a scholar and a recipient of uh, Patmasri, Singhajit Singh says the description of theater as explained as explained in Bharata's Natya Sastra to some extent resembles the proscenium theater while the Ras Lila and Sakitana is according to the mandala a circular performing area as mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. So here we can see uh, the similarities of Mamaripuri uh, Ras Lila pavilion and the pavilion which is given uh, by uh, Bharata's Natya Shastra. Uh, this pavilion is constructed in such a way that it depicts, uh, it replicates the beautiful Nikunja forest of Vrindavan. And here in my slide, I have given uh, the structure and the seating arrangement of the various dignitaries, but uh, since the, the slide is not working on the screen, I, I will move on to the next slide. Uh, conclusion is uh, Basanta Ras, it is a living tradition and it is also a way of life for the Manipuri Vaisnavites. And it also opens up a large area of its exploration in respect of its growth and history. And um, it also brings uh, organic uh, harmony in the society. Since it is the since Sri Sri Gobindji Tem Temple, it is the uh, prime focal point of all Vaisnavite activities of uh, the Maitai people. And here is the bibliography, but it's not visible. Thank you once again. Thank you so much. And uh, the floor is open. Uh, if any kind of question from any participant, you can ask him. If the participant has no question, then the session question is here that uh, it is based on the story sequence. And uh, uh, the point is here, uh, what are the sources of your literature review? That in uh, your literature, what are the sources you applied? Yes, sir. sir there are various uh, cultural inst institutes across the, the state. So I have visited uh, so many so many libraries, and I have done uh, uh, personal in interview with experts, and I have uh, downloaded theses, 
uh, than dissertations uh, from necessary sites as a part of literature review reducer. Okay, fine. So uh, most of the uh, literature comes from the text. You uh, text. So your your total uh, paper actually collect the data from the secondary source of data. Uh, sir, okay. both primary and secondary data, sir. And okay, half so of the half of the research is based on the uh, the folk mem memory, which is there in the traditional experts, which mm -hmm. is connected with this uh, performance. Uh, primary data. So, uh, yes, how can you collect the primary data, sir? Uh, regarding uh, regarding primary data, data I uh, my co guide has suggested me to uh, visit some renowned uh, uh, dignitaries and personalities who are connected with this field. So I used to ask them questions and I and I let them an analyze the inner philosophy regarding this topic. So, yeah. By this, oh. with this way, I used to collect, collect literature. From so uh, you have a structured question here in your uh, research paper. Pardon, pardon, sir. Uh, structured question paper. You you uh, applied the question here, and uh, by question here, applying this co question, you collected data from uh, uh, the primary source of data. So you collect the primary source of data from applying the structured question here. Uh, not structured, not uh, sir. Uh, mine is solely based on personal interviews, sir. Because okay. uh, this uh, this expertise are a bit old; uh, they are aged. So uh, I just told them to narrate whatever uh, they know regarding their performance. So they used to narrate it in in the form of, of a story, and I, I used to extract the necessary uh, ele elements from that story. Okay. That's how so I you, do. you applied the interview method. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Personal okay, interview fine. method. A person. Okay. Thank you so much for your nice presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So now we move to our next paper, which is the effect of diaspora, uh, diaspora on uh, Chitra Banerjee, uh, Devi Kanun, director, identify in the sister of my heart and the vine of desire. Uh, Poonam, the author is Poonam, PhD scholar. So, Poonam, are you with us? Yes, sir. A very good okay. evening to you and yes, all the fellow scholars. This is Poonam, research scholar from Banasali Vidyapit, Rajasthan. I am here to present my paper entitled Effect of Diaspora on Chitra Banerjee's Diva Karuni's Character's Identity in Sisters of My Heart and the Wine of Desire. As a writer for the Indian diaspora, Chitra Banerjee's Diva Karuni's other focus while writing is on settlers' issues, people who migrate to foreign lands and settles there for life, is an amalgamation of two of her favorite writing subjects. Most of her works in her novels and short stories collections deals with the life circumstances of women who settled outside India. They also shed light on the challenges these women faces in personal relationship and a new environment. She represents remarkable ingenuity and originality in both subject matter and technique. She is aware of differences in culture and seeks to write as a means of exploring these differences. Chitra Banerjee is a women-oriented person and her involvement in real life women related issues translates into her affinity with women centric writing as sharma explains in this regard i quote it is apparent that image of women in fiction has undergone a change women writers have moved away from traditional depiction of permanent self sacrificing women towards struggling female character in search of identity unlike earlier novels more recent writers reflect the diversity of culture and upbringing and the desire to survive and create their own space in a modern, competitive, dynamic world through their female characters. Chitra Banerjee presents her characters' feminine experiences as immigrants against a backdrop of issues such as racism, terrorism, painting, dreams, and the challenges of oppression. In her novels, she takes a prismatic shifting and rapidly changing perspective of difficult 
and different difficult concern of male dominance in society the more dynamic mode of male and female relations the intensity of immigration with the strong reverence for indian nationality and spiritual life chitra banerjee diva karuni is known for her own experiences and for the portrayal of various other migrants women in her books sister of my heart cognitive therapy of the relationship between two relatives sudhu and anju sudha and anju which tells the twisted stages stages of the story which make makes the past few years sister of my heart and the wine of desire are both unique in feminism and also seek recognized recognition in the novel sister of my heart anju and sudha are very close as they have been together as cousins since their birth anju is a few hour older, older than sudha so anju always tries to protect sudha and ensures her happiness as her main concern diva karuni also seeks to shift its cultural place and identity mediated by significant cross culture influences sister of my heart and the wine of desire deals with issues of diasporic amongst psychological and physical displacement and hyphenated identity often experienced by the immigrants is an alien in an alien country the novel depicts the indian mysticism fantasy and realism at the backdrop through which the novelist presents the inner struggles of the character representing the second generation of indian american writers chitra banerjee chooses to examine the whole of middle class women world of middle class women most of the stories are about indian immigrants from the author's native Beng- bengal to the united states and are told by female narrators in a first person singular approach often providing a voice of intimacy and cinematic credibility in the present tense overseas diaspora and their descendants experiences displacement fragmentation marginalization and discontinuity in the cultural discourse of the subject countries diasporic writings reveals experiences of instability and displacement to some degree yet this multiplicity of households does not bridge the gap between the home in the original culture and the culture of embracing the world boundaries get a unique habit of persisting in a thousand different ways are often conflicting thus he shift she shift the focus from historicism to temporality and hybridity that ca- cannot be contained in hierar- hierarchical or binary structures diva karuni's book directed for women of all races and beliefs that shares a common female experience all her heroines should get within the opposite boundaries of their own culture and religion she states i quote my characters struggle in the balance between family responsibilities and individual happiness which is in a way at the center of conflict between our hindu culture which always shows the mother as a giver nurturer and sacrificing herself for the good of the family and the western concept of self happiness women who either live abroad or are on their way to india are caught between the two opposing world they think more rationally but they retain some of the traditional mental beliefs diasporic spaces allow representations of people who spend two or more cultures languages and ethnicities and provide a way to rethinking post colonialism as a blurring of the lines of national enclaves however the notion of migrants does not address gender inequalities they are partially assimilated into american culture they try to relate to their newly adopted home but are mentally attached to the culture of their biological home they accept american culture externally but remain unchanged internally they fight for their culture in spite of displacement both sudha and anju deals with situation in their own way and still make a mark for themselves they freeze fall and fail but they melt rise and succeed in being accepted and assimilated the nostalgia for home is the quintin sense of diaspora Today's multicultural societies are the result of global immigration.
Migrant literature captures problematic issues and concerns experienced by them immigrants. Spatial displacement across geographical the boundaries thus occurring includes deregionalization and re-regionalization by individuals who of them immutable experiences. One is exile and the other is home. Whether voluntary or forced, a test to memories of home, people and surrounding is visible to them. Topics like deportation, home and homelessness. Discussion occupies the center place in expert right writing experiences exacerbate exer- 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 the pain and su- suffering displays in fantasy novel exile experience the trauma experienced by the paper is illustrated by a feeling of uneasiness longing for the immigrants home and homeland nostalgia and struggle for memory and thus identity it brings about emotional distress and turmoil caused by displacement the novel desires bell is a fictional representation shows the desperation of the immigrants for home and motherland comparisons and contradictions with adoption for, from native homes the land digs up memories and nostalgic experience sudha recognizes that the old man is not happy as he is suffering from a feeling of displacement in a foreign land i quote in this bed in this house all that is aligned to him he realizes that he can find peace in his homeland identity crisis is also experienced by the older person the moment the old man feels insecure his life changes and as a result a new hope arises in him a hope is the essence of life here for the old man the hope of going back to india and living the blissful life he longs for is something new when the old man asks her why she went to go back to india and take care of him she says i quote going back with you would be a way to start over in a culture i understand the way i will never understand america in a new part of Amer- india where no one knows me without the weight of old memories the whispers they say we knew she she had failed or survives her right so the rights to anju stating i am writing one final time to let you know that i am leaving for india i am going to take care of mr sen the old man i was looking after here he lives in jalpaiguri up in the north of bengal i think we will be happy there or at least peaceful which is perhaps better he is very fond of deitya and has offered to pay me a generous salary the struggle for identity and independence has become a very theme in women's writing studies the various problem faced by women and creates awareness among them women are struggling to achieve social freedom and civil rights in all dimension diva karuni has mingled the famous parts of america as well as the indian popularities like kachipuram silk all india radio or akashvani kali kalilata tanjore paintings were anju's proudly exhibits i quote there is nothing like our indian fabrics There is an exposure of culture changes which she accepted by Sudha in party of Mr Chopra where she did fine In the novel Sister of my heart the protagonist Sudha gathers courage assimilates herself and ultimately takes the step of moving to America the land Sudha knowingly or unknowingly emulates the ideal woman because of her traditional upbringing she thinks positive about america i quote america has its own problem she said but at least it would give me the advantage of anonymity no one in america would care that i was a daughter of chatterjees or that i was divor- divorced i could design life and my own living giving thirty everything she needs West of all no one would look down on her for America was full of mother like me who had decided that living alone was better than living with wrong man Hall stated that diasporic identities i quote are those which are consistently producing and reproducing themselves anew through transformation and differences Diva Karuni's narratives explores women seeking their identity as human being independent of their traditional role as a daughter a wife or mother anju and sudha demonstrate the female freedom that divakaruni celebrates although such freedom is achieved without trauma and pain 
and Juan Suda find courage not only to face the situations but also to understand their real need and aspirations. And you find solace among her fellow students at Berkeley while Suda learns for the first time what it's like to forge her own, pa own path. Anju and Sudha are satisfied with the thought of being independent and financially independent. Conclusion For the novel, two protagonists, two sisters, their life as a part of the diaspora in the United States are mixed experience. American society provides both opportunity as well as pain, and it seeks the foundation on which their extraordinary love and friendship stands for Sudha. There are frequent dislocation and the pain multiples each time tries to move and re-engage with the oddities in life. Sudha and Anastasia grapples with both their internal pain and external pressure as they move towards freedom. Diva Karuni suggests that women can assert themselves as individuals. Diva Karuni exhorts women to walk their path with courage. Heroines stand by themselves and learn to demand their place in society. They find themselves between joy and hardware. Thank you so much.